Hey everyone, this is Mike from Comic Book Trove here today with another Omnibus review and today I'm going to be taking a look at the uh, recently reprinted Planet Hulk Omnibus and this is one that I'm really excited to have in my collection at last. I missed out on the previous printing so uh, yeah there was no way I was going to miss out on it this time around because this is a book I hold in very high regard. Love this story. It really is, um, you know, to echo what many other people have said, um, in my opinion this really is one of the best Hulk stories ever written. I'd have it right up there in my probably top five or so Hulk runs slash stories. Um, it's great stuff so, and what we're going to do today is uh, as always I'm going to give an overview of the book, take a flick through it, show it off a little bit and discuss some of my thoughts on the material. Uh, but before we dive in and look at what's actually in here, let's look at the dust cover. What I've got here is the DM variant cover, this piece of artwork here, really good stuff featuring Hulk in full gladiator gear fighting off some crazy alien monster in an arena from an early scene in the actual story once it gets going. On the spine itself, pretty simple there, we've got Hulk, Planet Hulk. The uh, main crate is down there, as well as a bit of the uh, the planet Sakaar showing on the spine image. On the back, another cool image here of Hulk face to face with the uh, the warrior Kyera here, who features quite prominently in the story. She's pretty important. And then there is a bit of blurb down here that gives you a summary of what's in the book, and uh, obviously the contents down there. Feel free to kind of pause and take a look at that if you want to see that up close and have a proper read through. Um, on the book itself, really nice design here, obviously green being the uh, the colour of choice, the dominant colour, and featuring this great image here of Hulk just full of rage and hatred. Um, this is actually an image from the very end of the story, um, actually, so pretty, pretty cool to put that on the book there, it is a good image. Um, probably worth saying at this point that I want to give a spoiler warning before I do really get into this, because this is, uh, as I say, one of my favourite Hulk stories. Um, and I do like to talk about these sorts of books, you know, if you've got any familiarity with my videos, you'll know that I probably do like to talk about these things. Um, so yeah, spoiler warning, because I'm going to go into some of the details and discuss some of the key things that happen in Planet Hulk, including the ending. So I probably will give another brief spoiler warning before I actually talk about the specifics as how it ends, but um, I am going to talk about that, so fair warning. And um, what we've got here, as we first open the book, is contents page that... Uh, outlines the different um, story arcs, kind of, the different ways that it's broken up in here. So it starts off with um, three issues of Fantastic Four, and then Incredible Hulk issues 88 to 91. All of that is basically prelude stuff. It gives you the setup of why things are the way they are and at the beginning of Planet Hulk, um, i.e. basically why is the Hulk on this alien planet in the first place. Um, and then you get into the main story, so that's issues 92 to 105 of Incredible Hulk. That's the Planet Hulk story proper. Um, so yeah, as we first go in here, the first issue is, like I say, collecting some Fantastic Four stuff, and then a few issues of Hulk prior to Planet Hulk really kicking off. And to give this a uh, bit of a breakdown, what you get here is a storyline in which um, Hulk is exposed to a, a massive gamma bomb explosion again. And because of that, it kind of shocks his brain into going a little bit crazy and he ends up sort of inadvertently wrecking Las Vegas, goes on a bit of a rampage. It's a pretty cool story actually because the Thing is basically brought in to try and, and fight him and obviously those two characters, Hulk and Thing, have a bit of a of a history, pretty long history in fact. Um, so it's quite cool whenever they interact. I think that uh, it's well written in here as well with the Thing basically trying to get through to the, the banner side of him, to his human side and calm him down. Um, yes, yeah, so I do enjoy these issues. It's all pretty good. The setup, you know, the whole setup that we see in here to Planet Hulk is all pretty good stuff, but it's really when the Planet Hulk story itself gets going that this gets really good in here. Um, but uh, this stuff's enjoyable. And these are those um, earlier issues of Hulk where we see Banner is basically following on from the Las Vegas incident. He's just trying to lie low as he's done so many times in Hulk history. Um, and he ends up getting brought back into the fray. Nick Fury gets in touch with him, tells him there's a mission that only Hulk can basically accomplish and pull off. Um, there's a crazy kind of satellite situation going on in space. The way it's explained is that there's an AI in charge of it and uh, the man for the job is going to be the Hulk. They want to send him into space to basically decommission this satellite that has the capability of detonating nuclear warheads. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the premise as to why they send him up there, so he deals with that. Turns out he's been misled, and that wasn't really the truth of what the mission was all about. The reality is that some key figures in the Marvel Universe 
amongst them uh, being Reed Richards, Tony Stark, Doctor Strange, Professor Xavier, um, have all come to the collective decision that the Hulk is just too much of a risk any time he goes on these rampages, too many people get hurt, too many things get destroyed, and so they are going to blast him off Earth and send him away. The plan is to send him to a serene, peaceful planet where he can live out his days just kind of being by himself and uh, not being disturbed by anybody and not being a threat to anybody either. That's the, uh, that's the idea, but uh, that is not really how it plays out um, because what actually happens, of course, is there is a malfunction and his ship gets redirected to uh, planet Sakaar, this kind of barren, horrible world full of death and chaos. Um, ruled by an evil empire uh, emperor called the Red King. Hulk lands on this planet, initially quite weakened from having kind of gone through the uh, the lengthy journey from Earth to get here, um, but starts to gather his strength soon enough. And what we see is he's kind of forced into slave labor initially, forced to fight in a in a kind of gladiatorial arena. In doing so, he starts to uh, to meet up and join forces with some other alien individuals who've been put in the same situation. Uh, we see Meek and Korg, who names you may recognize from the Thor um, Ragnarok movie, but these are very different, much more serious incarnations of the characters than what you see in that film. Um, there's also a brood warrior, who is actually pretty cool. Um, and what they start to do is they band, they band together and they uh, start to become a kind of family. It ends up turning into a bit of a family dynamic. And this is just really great stuff. It's just great to see the uh, the way that Hulk deals with being on this planet. You know, initially, he's just being his kind of typical loner self, doesn't really want to be attached to anybody, but then starts to become more connected with this world because he starts to be seen as this kind of saviour figure um, and almost worshipped as a kind of almost godlike person, really, by a lot of the natives of this planet. And he starts to embrace that a little bit, leads a rebellion, an insurrection against this emperor, the Red King, who is very much a tyrant, a cruel monarch. Um, yeah, and it's just really good stuff. You know, it's, it's just really cool to see these characters develop. What I love about this story, and, and the, one of the reasons, if not the biggest reason, as to why I think it works so well, um, was just the simple premise, the fact that it's set on an alien world with a bunch of mostly brand new characters created specifically for this story. Um, it meant that pretty much anything could happen, you know, the, the stakes felt high all the way through it, if you don't know exactly what's going what's gonna to happen as you read through it. Um, really cool appearance here. I said there are mostly all new characters. That's because there is a, an appearance here by the Silver Surfer, who it turns out had been also captured and forced into... Uh, into becoming a gladiator on this planet. Um, so yeah, there's a fight there between Hulk and, and the Surfer before eventually both break free and they part ways. I think the Surfer offers to take him back to Earth, but Hulk basically says, no, I've got no reason to go back there. You know, the people who I thought were my friends have betrayed me, they've left me here. So, uh, you know, screw them. I'm gonna stay here and see what I can manage on this world. Um, and so he does. And like I say, he becomes very much a leader figure for a lot of, a lot of the uh, the everyday people of this planet, Sakaar. They start to call him names like the Sakaar Sun, the Green Scar, um, Holko, you know, uh, all these different kind of names that he's given, these titles. Um, it's really cool. And yeah, for the most part, he just does what he does best. You know, he's fighting monsters. He's, uh, he's just being the Hulk, but... Uh, these other cast of characters, like I say, everybody is, is genuinely really well written. Um, this character Meek here, at some point, he, something happens to him that makes him become a, a much bigger character. Um, and the direction that he goes in, you know, he starts to become a little bit mad, you know, driven a little bit mad by the war that they get drawn into. Um, this character here, they see that uh, same cover that's used on the image of the back of the, uh, the dust jacket, Kyera. Um, she's initially like the right-hand woman, so to speak, of the Emperor, kind of like his key lieutenant. Uh, but over the course of the story, she is kind of forced to realise and accept that the Red King is just totally mad, and that he is not a good guy to follow, which pretty much leads to her sw sw swapping sides, if I can get my words out properly, switching sides and joining up with the Hulk. 
and even starting to develop a romance with him as well. Um, worth pointing out maybe at this point in time before we start to get towards the end, because this isn't a very long story. You know, as an omnibus, it's one of the shorter ones. It's only about 650 pages off the top of my head, something like that. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so we're not too far off the end. Um, the pacing of the story, though, mentioning the length of the story, it, uh, it all proceeds at such a great pace. You know, there's almost no moments where you feel the story is dragging in any way, but it also doesn't feel like it's, things are moving too fast. It really just goes at the right pace all the way through it. Um, yeah, so there are going to be things that I don't mention. You know, this, I'm not intending to cover every plot point of this story, because although it might not be the longest one, there is quite a lot happening in here. Um, but yeah, it is a story that definitely has a tragic ending, worth mentioning that, because, um, yeah, this isn't the most upbeat story. It's got uplifting moments, and it's got these great moments of triumph and victory as Hulk and his allies, um, you know, go up against the odds. This Red King, who's got a huge army and, and everything else at his disposal, ultimately gets defeated by Hulk, and that's a big victorious moment, and that's great. Um... But basically, you get to a point where Hulk almost has a happy ending. You know, they, uh, they put him in place as the new king, the new ruler of this world. And he is a, very much a benevolent, merciful leader. Genuinely looking out for people, trying to make life better for everybody. And briefly succeeds. But in the end, it is all, of course, taken away in classic Hulk fashion. Hulk being, you know forever the tragic character that he is, never really getting his happy ending, um, gets so close to it here, which makes it so heart-wrenchingly painful when it's lost. And that serves to be the premise, really, for the follow-up follow -up event, follow-up story to this, which was the World War Hulk event. Like I said, this character here develops a romance with Hulk, they actually get married, and they are about to have a child when the ship that brings the Hulk here uh, explodes, massive explosion that wipes out basically the big city, the hub city of this world where everything was uh, really centralised and kills Kyera as well. So naturally, understandably, Hulk is pretty much torn apart by that. He's grief stricken. Initially, he's just super depressed, but then ha hatred and, and the the uh, desire for revenge takes over, and then we get this image here that's on the hardcover itself, that classic image of Hulk leading a campaign back to Earth, back to take revenge on the people who he holds responsible for this. Basically, he wants to go back and and uh, just beat the crap out of, let's say, if not outright, just kill characters like Reed Richards, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, and the, basically the, the ones who brought him up there in the first place. He is... Uh, Swearing vengeance on all of them. Um, now, I've got thoughts on World War Hulk. I'm not going to go into that here and now, because obviously that's not the book I'm covering. But uh, I will say that I don't think World War Hulk is as good as Planet Hulk. I think this is the much stronger story. Um, World War Hulk was very anticlimactic, I think, in the end, in my opinion. Um, but what we're flicking through here, you know, because although that was the end of Planet Hulk, there's a few extra stories collected in here, um, which give a little bit more insight as to what was going on on Earth, whilst Hulk was up here on Sakaar. Because um, basically this was all happening during the Civil War event, which is why Hulk is not present in any of that, because he was on Sakaar doing Planet Hulk stuff. Um, but uh, there is this cool What If story, What If featuring Planet Hulk. And I think uh, the premise of this, I haven't read this in quite a long time, um, but I think the idea of this is what if it had been Hulk who died in that explosion and not Kyera. And therefore, it's her, not him, who leads the uh, the war party back to Earth to take revenge on the uh, Illuminati group that we've mentioned already. Um, so a cool what if story, definitely a good thing to include in here. Very uh, very interesting read. And then you also get in the back um, a guide, like a Planet Hulk guidebook, um, which is full of really interesting stuff relating to. The characters that feature in this book, um, the world of Sakaar and its its history, the way its society functions, because I haven't really brought that up, but um, it is really, really well crafted as a world, as a setting for the story to take place in, because you've got these different groups, different kind of social classes in a way, um, different races are treated differently on Sakaar, um, 
And all that is is explored pretty well throughout the story, but this gives you like an in-depth encyclopedic kind of insight into it all. So if you enjoyed certain aspects of the story from a, uh, like I say, a world building kind of perspective, then this is uh, very much a great supplementary read to the main book and something that is great to have in the back. And as you can see, as I'm flicking through here, um, from the sheer amount of text on these pages, it's quite dense and comprehensive. So, yeah, this is uh, quite substantial uh, of a bonus inclusion to have in there. Um, and then you do get uh, you know some bonus covers at the end. This is a really cool one by Michael Turner, of course, the late, great Michael Turner. Um, yeah, and then a few different basic, very basic kind of concept sketches. Um, I think that was something that uh, Greg Pack very rudimentally drew. Um, to, to lay out a very basic outline of how some of the ideas he had in his mind could look when an artist drew them. Um, then at the end, just an afterword by Greg Pack, who, you know, didn't really mention it, but Pack is the main writer of this uh, of this story. But it is really good. Um, hopefully that summary kind of conveyed a little bit as to how, how much I enjoy it. Like I say, it was fairly brief. Um, didn't want to touch on every single plot point. Um, but it is a well-known story, although it, to me it still feels like this is a modern story, but it's about 16 years old now, so, you know, quite a bit of time has passed since this came out, and I think it has cemented its place in Hulk history as one of the great Hulk stories. It's a well-deserved reputation, in my opinion. Um, something I'd definitely recommend if you're a Hulk fan and haven't got around to checking this out yet. I do think that you should do so, especially with this omnibus coming out. It's a great way to collect it and to read through all of it and get a lot of that supplementary stuff as well in terms of the prologue that builds up to it and then that guidebook and stuff like that in the back. It's all great stuff to have in this omnibus. So uh, yeah, well worth recommending. Gets a thumbs up from me. Um, let me know your thoughts on Planet Hulk though. If, uh, if it's something that you've read before, do you like it as much as I do or perhaps you didn't like it as much? Either way, happy to hear what you have to say. Um, but thanks as always for sticking with me and watching this all the way through. If you've done so, that's appreciated as always. And I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.